We have the results in for the Lacey Township Committee. Uh, Tim McDonald and Mark Dykoff uh, have won. Well, uh, Tim McDonald had 5,858 votes and Mark Dykoff had 5,635 votes. Uh, in third came Ted Kaunacki with 3,270 votes and fourth, Sean Judson with 3,197 votes. So it was a pretty close race. Uh, just a matter of a few thousand votes. Uh, anyway, off to Cody. Yeah, so looking at the national standpoint of everything, so far, um, the Menendez and Hugan race is going extremely close. Currently, Menendez is only winning by 2.5%, uh, and I, that's about 25,000 votes. Whereas, surprisingly, overall, now, remember, these numbers are inconclusive. Uh, the Menendez race only has about, the Menendez Hugan race only has about 36% vote counted. However, in the um, congressional district races, um, Andy Kim got blown out of the water, only receiving 36.1% of votes. Uh, Tom MacArthur currently leading 61.8% with 54,000 votes. Um, this could change overall throughout the counties in the state, but I mean. So, Cody, you said there's a 2.5% difference between nice. Menendez and Hugan? Yes. See, that's, that's crazy, though, because. Usually, Democrats oh, have New Jersey under wraps. Exactly. This is, a, this is a tight state. In the 70s, the last time we had a yeah. Republican senator. Yeah. So, yeah. And so this years. is, it's, it could be groundbreaking. And you, you look, it's, it's, it's a domino effect. It's only, you, the state yeah. goes to national because if this state turns red, you know, it's 14, we have 14 electoral college votes. So, yeah. And, th and think well, about that. It's so close right now. And that's only one third of the entire vote counted, and it's so close. It couldn't stay close. They might hit a Republican area, and it might just shoot right up for Hugan. And it's kind of odd because a state like New Jersey, which is traditionally blue, is very close in the Senate race. Meanwhile, in Texas, which is typically a red state, is actually close, and I think the Democrat is leading right now. Yeah, uh, what, what is the number, Emma, for um, Texas? Isn't it 50.8% or something? Yeah, right now it's leading it very narrowly. 40, it is 0.9% away from each other with Democrats in the lead right now. Mm -hmm. That's for uh, the single Senate seat up for grabs. Um, Missouri is leading Democrat with 56.7 for um, McCaskill. That's for Senate again. Um, but see, yeah. these toss-up states, they could radically change in an instant. Back to yeah, Texas, really though. Could. That yeah. is something. That's, that, yeah. This is a crazy yeah. topic because you have yeah. uh, Beta O'Rourke, who is right now has a 1% uh, lead over Ted Cruz. And Texas is a major Republican state, and they haven't been Democrats since forever. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I, I, I don't know, I, exactly. I don't know what time where Texas was. Very, quite some long time. Yeah. Yeah. We all know that they've always For, for it to be counties. even this close yet to have a, a Democrat leading is there really There is really is crazy. Like no, there's no pattern this election. Yeah, it, this yeah. is, this is actually going. There's, like, there's a lot of close ra uh, election. And I, mean, I think it might be elections. even for a fact of lack of media coverage. You know, it, it might be, you know, heavy mudslinging campaigns from both sides at each other. But realistically, it kind of seems like everyone is going based off their own opinion, and there's no unanimous group opinion from one area. I mean, like we were just saying, Texas, almost always conservative. There's pretty much never yeah. been a time where the state unanimously has been Democratic up until now. New Jersey, usually locked down very liberal Democratic. We're up in the air right now with our Senate and our um, House of Representative seats. I think I... I think with this last election, this last presidential election, uh, having two candidates that, if you watched news coverage over the election, there was a lot of people who who were saying things like, you know, I don't, I don't like either of these candidates. Yeah. I just have to pick one, and it's almost it's almost like a renaissance where people are just thinking more freely now and, and forming their own opinions and not going off of, oh, well, this, this man's a Republican and Donald Trump's a Republican and I'm Republican, so I'm voting for this man or 
vice versa. And you know, I think even if you, you know, if you love Trump or you hate him, relatively, you'll see his his messages of, you know, fake news allegations, and it kind of makes people think: should they not follow what they see and to think of their own fruition? Um, and I mean, obviously, results are changing, and whether that's for his message or for others' message, it remains to be seen. John, what do you have for the county so far? Uh, the county? Well, nothing's really been changed in the county in the, the Senate scene. It's still about a 30% lead. But uh, I, I think it's very interesting that uh, in, on the state level, though, that Hugan and Men, uh, Menendez are so close. I think that might even be due to that uh, Menendez, he's, been, he's going for a re-election. I think a lot of people might be tired of him. You know, they want a new face on the Senate. And I think Hugan might be bringing a lot of things that obviously quite a few people are interested in. I also believe um, there's been some controversy around Menendez too, which uh, that might play into him, uh, you know, having a harder time with beating Hugan. Which and is, I don't know if it's, but that goes, is this indicative of a swing in the political views of New Jersey or is it, well, you know, well, how about the political, response how about the political else? views in the country? Currently Senate seats, 80 are declared, but there's still 20 left, but yet, Republican Party is still leading 45 to 34 with only one independent. So currently they are 11 up on Senate. Could we even that could we even that divide out in our state where we think we're one thing but apparently we're a toss up or some things changing politically. Um, well, what do you guys think? See, well, back to Menendez and Hugan. I I honestly think with that that it's more about the campaign. I I feel like the mm. Republicans launched a very, very harsh mudslinging campaign. I mean, every time you looked at a video or, or, you know, went online somewhere, you see an ad bashing Andy Kim or Bob Menendez. And Kirk. going back... All you, all you hear is mm -hmm. Andy Kim is a Pelosi liberal. Yeah. Or yeah. You, you can't get away from that. What you, said before, what you said before about the third-party candidates, it's kind of like one of the issues about a two-party system how it forces people to choose from the lesser of the two evils, sometimes that lesser of the two evils is still evil. Yeah. So sometimes you're forced to That's true. vote for someone you don't like just because you know the third party candidate can't win yeah. and you're pressured to just vote for that That's person. That's another issue too. People should be voting more freely. They shouldn't, they shouldn't look at it as a two party system. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you should expansive. Be, you know. Most people say vote for one or vote for Dem or Republican because you're you know, uh, an oh, independent right, is never right. going to win. But if you vote for them, it gets them more yeah, popularity it's just because at you least. Don't think and then so. maybe next election, if they don't win that one, they can win. Yet when you look yeah. at, you know, everybody says an independent can't win, yet um, former presidential candidate and current now, what, senator, uh, Bernie yeah, Sanders, has won again. Yeah. Uh, originally, during the presidential election of 2016, he reformed to Democratic views, but... He's overall always been independent, and yet he can still pull numbers, almost beating uh, Clinton in the primaries back in the day. Yeah, that's that's interesting. So and I, mean, I think a big problem with it is that we don't have a well-funded third party. The no, problem is don't. with all the power that comes from the oh. money that gets poured into these Yo, parties, man. it makes it so it's He's incredibly difficult now. for a independent party to really hold their own in an election. And it, it's not even for a lack of funding as oh, well. Wait, it's no, a lack of coverage. I mean, we all look at our um, like our private news organizations such as CNN, Fox News, um, MSNBC, things like that. You know, most of them generally try and stay middle grounded, but they all have some sort of smaller, you know, leanings. I mean, where is our independent? Where is our libertarian, our humanist? Where are those news organizations? And that goes back to coverage. It's it, We need coverage of the independents or no one is going to get elected anytime soon. And, and maybe is, that's what this country needs. The issue is all the um, all the independent news corporate or news organizations online are very small and unknown because they don't receive all the funding that organizations like CNN do, Fox News, and they've been around a lot longer. The Libertarian Party was not formed that long ago actually, and that's one of that's the biggest third party that we have in the United States right now. And yet, they only average around last uh, in 2016. I believe they got two to three million votes nationally. I I, I do feel that we need a, a a party that really puts aside the differences of 
Democrat and Republican because there's this there's this you know decade old well century old mm -hmm. feud between Democrat and Republican. If you have a third party person who emerges and and sides with some things from both parties, the strong the strong suits, you you could have a really really good candidate. And I think we do get that, except for some leanings. You know, we always. We try to strive for somebody in the middle, but I mean, eventually they are going to lean to one side. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't true. usually have somebody on the far end unless, you know, there needs some big shakeup. But that's remained to be seen for the last bit of our um, results counting. So thank you so much for watching. We will come back with Close Up Club.